Hello, everyone, and welcome to Postgrad Entertainment Presents Postgrad Movies. And on this special little 0.5 episode, we will be talking strictly about both old boys. This is, of course, in preparation for what's going to be happening this weekend, which is the fact that The Hobbit is coming out. And we are hoping to dedicate our entire episode this weekend to The Hobbit. So this episode will not have any of the talking about each other's week in the beginning and that type of thing. And yeah, who cares? Yeah, it doesn't matter. And no, it's <laughs> irrelevant. And during I don't have to I don't have to hear about parrots again. Thank God. And during the weekend, we will not be having a Netflix movie spotlight totally not sponsored by Netflix yet. That is going to be taken care of today. Today we will be talking about the remade old boy, the 2013 Spike Lee version in comparison to the 2003 original Korean version that is available for streaming on Netflix by Chanwook Park. Can we just call it Oedipus Rex plus Kung Fu? <laughs> that is exactly what it was. Because that's really what this movie is. Yeah, it's like yeah. I mean it, it's it's a revenge movie. It's it's literally the genre. The genre is revenge, which is <laughs> not Greek tragedy mixed with Korean kung pao. <laughs> Korean Wait, kung pao. Kung, kung fu, not kung pao. That's enter, that's like the chicken. Enter the fist. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, that movie was so good. The Spike Lee movie had that. So good. Oh, oh god. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so are we gonna do a one sentence review of these movies? Okay. Let me let me give the the ratings for oh, all of okay. them. So for the remade... One's going to be good and one's going to be bad. So for the remade old boy on IMDb, it's got a 4.9 rating. On Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 43% with an equal 43% top critic score. On Metacritic, it's got a 49%. It is directed by Spike Lee. It stars the always awesome Josh Brolin, Elizabeth Olsen, Charlotte Copley, Samuel L. Jackson, and others. The original... Korean Old Boy from 2003 has an 8.4 rating on IMDb, an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, and a 78% top critic score, with a 74% Metacritic score. And pardon me for this section, but it is directed by Chan Wook Park. It stars Min Sik Choi. It stars also the female lead is Hai Jung Chang, and the main villain is Ji Tai Yu. So, good times on that, and I'm so glad I totally made it without necessarily stuttering or. That was great. Yeah, that was pretty good. You're perfect. That was pretty good. You're ready to go traveling in Korea. I, I don't. Except you shouldn't. Did you hear about the 80 year old man who like went to Korea? Got eaten or something? What? No, they, <laughs> so, he fought in the Korean War. Oh, really? So technically, that war is still on, or you know, declared. So they captured him and declared him a war, um, like a war criminal. So he's an eighty-something-year-old man, and he's in prison. That's awful. Was he in best? Was yeah. he in best Korea or South Korea? <laughs> I assume he was in North Korea, but I not. I, I don't. I don't think South Korea would do something like that. But then again, I don't know. Well, South Korea is ours, and best Korea is the only Korea. So he was probably in that one. <laughs> All right, let's talk about old boy. All right, all hail glorious emperor. So, so, so well, let's begin with our one sentence review. Of uh, the original, I'll start the remake, and then we'll, uh, we'll do the original, and then we'll do Spike Lee. Okay. So I'm gonna say, uh, good tale of revenge, amazing writing, great cinematography, all around interesting film. It's very profound. Uh, and, and then for the Spike Lee one, you just copy and paste that, but then you put not in front of all those compliments. <laughs> So it's the same movie, just not profound and, and not good cinematography. I mean, the, the English doesn't shake out. But the point is made. Essentially, it's the same movie. I don't know. I watched the American one first, but we could get into that later. Right. So what, your one-sentence review. Okay, so my one, of both movies. my one sentence review of the original film is honestly right up with what you are saying it is gripping a harrowing tale of getting stuck in a jail cell and not knowing who you are and what's going on. The deep roots to someone's past that get changed, messed up, how revenge blinds you to everything around you. It, it really is horrifying. 
emotionally destructive, beautiful in every sense of the word, and also crazy gruesome. And it's awesome. Good job, Spike Lee. <laughs> right. That's, you made a master. Yeah, that's that's no, that's the ori- that's the original. <laughs> and then for the Spike and, Lee and- version, I'm gonna say my one sentence review is didn't watch it. <laughs> you didn't watch it? Oh. No. I tried so hard. What? I tried so hard. I looked everywhere. It was out of theaters here in Puerto Rico. And then I tried to find it through completely legal means online. And oh, I could not for the life of me find it. I, 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 was, I was using everything that I could, all the tools in my arsenal. I couldn't find it. Man, I was going to ask you, the very first question was, which one had a better sex scene? So yeah. which, which yeah. one had a better sex scene? And you're obviously going to say the remake. <laughs> Yeah, of course I am, because this was before I knew the ending, so I enjoyed it a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, this is... I First off, I saw both movies alone, but I saw the remake, obviously, in a theater, right. which was awkward. So I was just alone, like, what up? There was no one, nope. there was no one in the theater? Oh, there, there's actually quite a few people. Oh. So, just not around me. Like, my row was empty, and I sat right in the middle like a jackass. Like, this is mine. <laughs> This whole row was mine. And then behind me sat a bunch of, like, 20-year-old stoners. Probably not stoners. Well, they might have been stoners. Anyway, and then there was, like, a couple other people. I went on Black Friday, mm. so it was empty. I, I I went in, like, 20 minutes beforehand, and uh, I, I claimed my territory. And nobody came in until, like, the very last minute. And it, it, it's really weird. My phone died. I, I haven't experienced this in a very long time, but ultimate and true boredom... <laughs> Is a weird feeling, <laughs> especially in disorientation, because you don't know what time it is at all times. So not, I didn't wear a watch, of course, and so not knowing what time it is mixed with, I don't have anything to do, just led to me to sit there in the middle of the theater alone for like 20 minutes with my thoughts. Oh man, that was scary. <laughs> Which then led up perfectly to Old Boy, the remake, and I was like, okay, I watched the movie, and... It was it was a pretty okay movie. Like I thought it was a little bit over the top and gruesome, but I like movies like that. Right. And, oh my god, that ending. Oh my god. They do the ending. I don't know which one does Okay. So the remake is essentially let's take everything subtle about the first old boy and just hit you over the head with it a hundred times. So uh, let me give you a rundown of what changes. So I think the first thing that changes is his daughter mm-hmm. slash his lover right. is not a sushi person anymore. She is a she like runs a like a traveling urgent care essentially for homeless people. So she runs into him. Second thing it changes. Well, it just added some things. Like instead of just killing his ex wife, they raped and killed his ex wife. Very and nice. They show that, and it's like oh oh my. I mean, it's like a bunch of subtle things. The scene. Where in the original, he's pulling his teeth. Instead, he's cutting pieces of his neck mm. and then pouring salt on it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, I, a lot more gruesome with the hammer. I, I, I don't know, because the pulling the teeth out was horrifying. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I would have cringed more. I don't think... I, they're both they're both gruesome in their own right. Right. I, d- I don't know. I just right. don't like the idea of getting a tooth pulled out. It's just... It messes with I don't, me. Ugh. I think I I don't know what I'd rather have a teeth pulled or I I think I'd rather have a tooth pulled than pieces of my neck being sawed off slowly. So uh, what else did they change? They they added a character really, which like his best friend, and he like goes to his bar all the time. His name's Chucky. Oh, that's nice. Like I know I know in the old movie he had a best friend, but it only shows him in flashbacks. Yeah. But in this one, it's like he's actually taking care of him. Another thing they added was the main villain instead of just being like. Instead of having the main character, I always forget his name in both movies. The old boy. <laughs> Instead of having him just go seek out revenge on his own, essentially he says, "Hey, I have your real daughter in cap like captive. You have like a week or three days or something to figure out who I am and why I locked you up for twenty years." So essentially, he makes a game out of it. Mm. And, th- and this is what I liked about the Spike Lee movie, which was they set up kind of the saw like. The saw like atmosphere saw the movie as in essentially the way they hypnotized him, quote unquote, 
was by showing him TV specials right. that were completely fabricated, showing his daughter growing up. Yeah. Essentially, like, Dateline, and they're like, oh, so you're the daughter of the murdered wife, which the husband mysteriously disappeared. Mm-hmm. Like, that actually sounds like a legit Dateline. So they just show, showed that. So he knew what his daughter looked like and what he perceived to know what his daughter looked like, which I felt did a great job of tricking the audience very effectively. Right. The next big thing they changed was the whole storyline of the main villain's motivation. Because instead of him having sex with his sister and killing his sister, his sister has sex with his father and his father has sex with like his entire family, including the boy, which is really effed up yeah you don't see that you don't see you don't see the the boy and you see the girl and the father having sex but you don't see the boy and the guy having sex with the same gun. yeah because um, that's wrong but <laughs> yeah but essentially the whole thing was that brolin kind of outed the entire scenario by accident by starting this rumor which outed the family which caused him to move which caused his father to go crazy and murder their entire family mm-hmm. which i thought was way I think that's like way more sinister and way more traumatic than I killed my sister. Let me ruin this person's life forever because he said one thing. Like I don't know. I feel like that one – like I get what the Korean film's doing is saying, you know, a tiny – even the tiniest of stones causes a ripple essentially. Well, this one was like, wow, you actually did kind of mess up, man. You shouldn't be <laughs> – maybe you – I don't know if you deserve – that punishment because nobody deserves that punishment but this person is way more effed up in the head and the end scene they changed it instead of him with a box and him cutting off his tongue it led him going to a tv studio where he was like oh my god this tv show is fake and then the main villain was like this is not your daughter this is actually your daughter and you see a picture of her like having sex with him which was recorded and you're like oh Oh, no. oh, like as soon as that happens, you're like, oh, no, like I've never saw this movie before. And I was just like the entire time, as soon as he sees the TV set, I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, 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 And then it happens. And you're just like, oh, fuck, why? Oh, God. Oh, God, why? So basically they did keep the incest between him and the oh. daughter from the original film. Oh, yeah, of course they did. Okay. But, I mean, his reasoning was better because I don't get – because in the Korean film, he was like, I just want you to have sex with your daughter because why not? It's it's almost like here's another rumor that you have to now keep, I guess was the point. Well, on this one, essentially it was I want you to feel the same love that my father showed me and you killed my father. Well, so it's, in the in, – no, no, no. See, in, in the Korean, it was, it, it was different. In the Korean, what they were trying to go for was – the fact that the bad guy was deeply, deeply in love with his sister and right. and he could not tell anybody that. It was a very taboo thing that they were experimenting with. And then in the beginning, they, they didn't expect it going that way, but they did end up falling in love and they had to carry that secret with them. Right. And, and people wouldn't have understood that except for them, you know? And then all of a sudden she dies and it's like having the, per, the love of your life ripped out from under you. And... Right. The main character in the, in the Korean, he was so focused on revenge that even during the sex scene, you can tell that he's not entirely there. You know, the sex right. scene is not about the sex; it's about it's about revenge. It's still about revenge. He he still has it in his head. He's still messed up, and that's why he does it. Oh yeah. But after but after the sex scene, he kind of realizes that there that there's more to life than revenge, and starts relying on her a lot more and starts trying to work with her and then starts eventually falling in love with her and then when he gets to the end he realizes the only way that i can be free of this is to kill him and then go with her and live a happy life because i have to move no i i don't know about that one so we're going to talk about that next because i want to talk about the difference between the american version and the korean movie the original which was in Spike Lee's version, Brolin locks himself up again into a cell and leaves his daughter to just love him and pretend that he's lost. And that's it. Like, he locks himself up again and he's happy. He's, like, at peace with himself. Because he can't bring himself to kill himself because, essentially, he tried to kill himself and he just couldn't do it. Right. So he locks himself away so his secret can never get out. While in the Korean film, it left it very ambiguous at the end because 
he gets hit he gets hypnotized hypnotized but he doesn't have a tongue so he can't talk and his daughter lover comes <laughs> and <laughs> His daughter lover comes and like hugs him and she's like, I love you so much. And the ending shot is him just looking on and you don't know if he still remembers or not, if he does not remember the rumor or not. So I feel because of that, it's ambiguous in the sense of that. Yes, he's trying to forget. So he doesn't have to live with that burden, with that ultimate sin, which is still a very selfish thing. Or if he does remember and then I mean, the movie ends. So you don't know what will happen after that. You don't know if he still remembers and he can't do it anymore. You don't know if he's going to go kill himself. You don't know. Like, it's very ambiguous. So so to assume that he to assume that he decides to live a happy life with his daughter, lover, is... is I, I don't feel like there's enough evidence to suggest that. And that's... I mean, the ending was magical in the Korean film. I'm like, that was a way better ending than Spike Lee's. But I feel like the review... Like, the whole the whole hypnotism part of it was way better in the Spike Lee movie. Because I feel like that's way more convincing than look into the coin. You're now getting very sleepy type of scenario. Right. Because that's fake. And I guess that's why. It, it's, I, from a psychologist's perspective, I found that way more plausible. Now, the Spike Lee movie in every other regard sucked. <laughs> I was far too explicit. But I, th- I feel like the villain's motives and the how he hypnotized, quote-unquote, old boy. I forget his name. Did he have a name? Old boy? I don't remember. I don't remember either. He had a name. It's like Kevin or something. Oh, that's um, a bad name. If it was Kevin, that's an awful name. Kevin! <laughs> Kevin's a girl? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It, it, I, I feel like Spike Lee's modifications had was actually smart modifications to make it more realistic, which led me to be nauseous at the end of that film. But then I went Black Friday shopping, which eliminated that. And I think the the question is, would you have been nauseous if you would have seen the original first? No, because I would have known the entire time. Would you? I, I would have been queasy. I would have been like, oh, see, I, I think known? I would have had a feeling of dread the entire movie, which I think is the point, right? You watch it once and then you just have a feeling of dread. It's like Oedipus Rex. You read it the first time and at the end you're like, your head explodes and then old boys the same way if you were to watch it again and you see this entire relationship building you just feel gross and that's the point of the movie is to feel gross it's a movie you kind of want to watch once and then want to watch again and then you never want to watch it again after that you don't want to watch it a third fourth anytime and i probably won't i think twice is quite enough (laughs) well okay so why did you feel nauseous when you were watching the remake what was it about the sex scene i think it's i think it was because that it was very hot (laughs) i mean it it was it was it was very intimate and it was you kind of felt like oh yeah look at that you know when you're like oh this is a very well done sex scene and it gets you kind of excited you got a boner in the middle of the theater and you were alone didn't you (laughs) (laughs) that's all the time Uh, that's all the time no, it, well, I mean, you totally did. Stop. No, 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 no. Stop I didn't. Around. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't because it's weird. I don't. I don't like getting public boners, so I just punch them down. Um, <laughs> but I mean, that's the point. The point of the of the of the sex scene is to make you feel like that, though, right? It's to make you feel almost excited for the sex scene. You're excited to see nudity, and you're excited to see two people get it on. It's like porn, right? You're gonna feel aroused. That's the whole point of that scene. Just so when the ending comes, you're just like. Oh, I feel just so disgusted in myself. Like, not it's supposed to make you reflect the feelings that the main character has when he finds out. It's to make you feel gross at the fact that you're aroused at this scenario. Right. Which is why I like old boys, because it gives you scenarios that are disgusting, but it reflects that feelings in yourself. Like, the whole dumpling thing, I felt gross at the fact he was eating all those dumplings. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God, stop showing dumplings. It's so gross. <laughs> and, and I think that's what that movie does well, was make you feel gross. Fair enough. And, and wrong on the inside. Yeah. It makes you feel like a bad person. And I think Spike Lee's sex scene and the, and the reveal at the end did it quite well. The Spike Lee version, was it like the mm-hmm. original version where the atmosphere in the, at least the Korean one, was one of just almost depression? Like, 
you were unable to get over this depression that you were feeling. Everything was beautiful, but the you had really strong dark colors and the way that the character that the actor was handling himself, it was all just muted rage and depression. What was the atmosphere like in Spike Lee's? So the big absence from the remake from, from the Korean film is essentially his inner dialogue has been removed. So you don't hear like the inner dialogue of Brolin too much. I mean, not as much as the Korean film, because the Korean film was more about telling than it was about showing. Yeah, it was about himself. At, at, yeah, right. And it was more about storytelling and the fact that like people, that movie is essentially just a string of dialogue with some action scenes. Yeah. While the Spike Lee version was more about showing. So, so what, what I'm going for this with is that the atmosphere was more hopeful, as in they. It was like a Scooby Doo episode, if that makes any sense, <laughs> because it's it's essentially him putting together clues, and you're like, okay, I finally figured this out. Let me go do it. Oh, I succeeded at this because he had an end goal. It, the end goal was not revenge; it was to save his daughter, right? As well as revenge. I mean, so it was more hopeful in the sense, like, oh my god, he's gonna save his daughter, right? Oh my god, he finally found somebody that loves him. He got, you know, he cured his alcoholism. It was very hopeful. And then at the very end, you're just like, oh, well, this is sad. Yeah. While the Korean film was just sad. It was just so depressing. Yeah. The entire time. Yeah, the entire the entire time you're watching the Korean film, you're just sitting there and you're like, I don't like this. Yeah. I mean, the different I mean the differences in the in the in the Korean film, he could have given up at any time and there would have been zero repercussions besides him not getting his revenge. Yeah. And he could have been in love with his daughter. Yeah. And not know it. But so, I mean, uh, but then again, yeah. living 20 years practicing, because that's the point. He was training over and over and over again and watching all the things he was watching to keep track. It was all, it was 20 years of preparation for the moment when he could leave and ruthlessly murder the bad guy, right. the person that put him in jail and stole his family away. Which is why I like the Spike Lee version because it was the whole reason he wanted to get out was for his daughter. It was it was it was like he mentally um, convinced himself that his daughter will give him a chance, and if he gets out, he he just wants his daughter. He could care less about revenge. He just wanted his daughter. But then that 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 really... I mean, it's it's totally a different. It's a completely different reasoning than the original, and the original I think was way more profound. But what I like was the sense of hope that Spike Lee movie instilled. So essentially, instead of depression and revenge and anger, it instilled feelings of hope, which was just ruthlessly crushed at the end. It just made... So it made the ending more impactful because you knew in the old boy one, no matter what happens, it's going to be bad. <laughs> That's true. And did the did the main bad guy kill himself, like in the original? Yes. Yeah? In yeah. the same way, in the elevator? Uh, he shot himself, but not in an elevator. Because I really, really enjoyed the bad guy in the original Old Boy because he wasn't this messed up person physically. It was, he was legitimately perfect physically. There was nothing, no scratch on him. He was well groomed. It was all like that. He was just really destroyed inside. He was a shell of a person and he was living through the exterior up until the moment when he could confront the person that destroyed his life. And that was terrifying. The way that he handled himself when the showdown came between both of them, the way he handled himself was really scary. That guy was really scary. And then all of a sudden, he's just in the elevator, and you don't see it coming. He's just kind of like hanging out there, and all of a sudden, boom, he pops himself in the head. And you're yeah, like, scene was so well done. My jaw dropped when that happened because it was just, it was him reliving what was going on. And then all of a sudden, boom, blood everywhere, and he lands on the ground. And you're like, oh my God. That scene where, oh, that scene was so well done. I think that was one of my favorite scene transitions yeah. of like all time. Yeah. Because. It just gets the emotion, and it's just so sudden, and it's so it blended so well together, and mm. oh, beautiful. But uh, in the remake, who plays the villain? What's his Charlto name? Charlto Copley, the same guy that yeah. does from Elysium, from right? everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he did a great job. I I really liked him, but he was physically kind of messed up because he had like a big yeah, scar because scar. his father shot him with a shotgun. But really, other than that, he was just kind of a maniac. I don't know. I wouldn't say that he was perfect physically because that guy is not the most physically perfect. Right. I, I, I feel he was just 
effed up in the head. It made it very clear that he was very disturbed. Right. <laughs> very, very disturbed. Yeah, whereas in the original one, you didn't notice that the guy was disturbed. And it, I found that kind of... I found that kind of mm. telling because you were talking about the profoundness of the yeah. movie and the movie really goes to show that the people that you see all around you in the world, everyone has secrets. Everyone has things that they're holding in for themselves right. and that can either be helping them out or it can be something that is destroying them on the inside. And that even though they, they can look fine on the outside, they can have something so dark inside that it's terrifying and that it makes them terrifying, which is why everybody except for the main character from the original old boy, they looked fine. But the main character kind of looked like a nutso. His hair was all over the place and he was always <laughs> he was always really like a nut. he was always really wide eyed yeah. and like looking around and stuff. He looked crazy. He was such a great actor. He was. Oh, he was. Such a great actor. And it's funny because the juxtaposition of seeing him looking kind of crazy and then everybody else outside looking really, really eerily normal was weird and then you realize that it's how he saw himself so he might not have even looked that way that could have been just a metaphor of what he was seeing inside of himself because of what was killing him he could have looked like a completely normal person to everybody else but to himself he looked crazy and he looked demented which is no, I think he looked like that. It's it's really weird. It's I don't know. It's I think it's really weird. Well, he never got a haircut. No, he didn't. He didn't. But I'm just saying that it's quite possible that he was seeing himself through his own eyes and not through everybody else's eyes. That they mm -hmm. that they could have been going for something like that, which is really weird to think about in from a metaphor yeah. standpoint. I can see that. That movie was that movie was very much there's a lot of things under the surface. Definitely. Especially with the inner dialogue and everything like that. So. Yeah. So I, I think it breaks down to the Korean one is beautiful in its script writing and the way – And the acting. Oh. And the acting and the cinematography, which Spike Lee's just couldn't live up to, and it didn't. But like I said, what I enjoyed about the Spike Lee movie does not make it a good movie. It just makes it – I like the alterations. The alterations that you made were good. It's not like it ruined the movie. If in fact, it made it probably more believable, but it was just handled with zero finesse. So. Right. And I, before we do anything of ending, I want to talk about that hallway scene because it is, <laughs> it is such a famous fight scene. And the way that mm. it was handled, when you saw the Korean version, because you saw it after seeing the remake, mm. did you go, this is way better? It was more realistic. Okay, how am I how am I gonna phrase this? Hold on, give me a second. It was better in the fact that it that it that the main character didn't just transform into Jet Li like he did in the Spike Lee movie. Right. So it almost felt more like a brawl and felt more realistic, even though it was choreographed. I'm pretty Cause, sure because he would he would get like knocked down to the ground and then everyone would start beating him. Right, which still happened. It just didn't. It felt more real because it was just a hodgepodge of people. While in the Spike Lee version, Brolin just was like, "Why and just started. It, it was it was cool. It was more gruesome in the fact that he actually hit the people, and you could actually see that. But yeah, the old boy, the the original was better. I was introduced to that fight scene before I saw the movie itself. I think everybody has because yeah. I really I really like the amazing Asian choreography fight scenes. But anyway, mm. but when I saw it in the movie, it was, it just, it blew me away. It really, really did. I saw it and I was like, this is amazing. Apart from the fact that it's one shot. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's wonderful. It is wonderful. Two shots. Well, because of the elevator. Well, well but, but you don't, you don't count the elevator. I'm talking about the straight hallway okay. fight scene and that's it. All right. Let's not count the elevator. Fine. So, yeah, it was just so impressive, and it was the kind of thing where it's like, this guy is so fueled by revenge that there is literally nothing that can stop him. There is no amount of people that can stop this person, and it was so good. And I like what, you're, what you mentioned about how it felt really real. It did, because usually people, when they beat somebody else with a stick or something you know it's fine and they, they keep on beating him or whatever but in this one they would hit him like once or twice and the stick would break and you're like they're hitting this guy so hard the stick is breaking and 
and the guy is still going on and then he gets stabbed in the back and he keeps on fighting oh my god oh it's so yeah. good oh and when i felt like you could see that people are actually getting tired in this film it's like almost like they hired people that have never been a professional fighter before or have had any training, which was the point. It's just a bunch of goons that this people that these people hired, right? And they're just trying to beat the crap out of them. But you could see that they're actually getting tired. While in the Spike Lee one, like I said, he just turns in the jet lead and just like and knocks him out in one blow and blows their face off. Is that exactly what happens? No, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. And I also heard that in the Spike Lee version, it was the hallway fight scene was two shots as opposed to one. It was. Ah. Which that was fine. Damn it, Spike. Whatever. If that's, that is not the main complaint with that movie. It's, okay, yeah. It's... I thought it was pretty solid. I think it was about a five, five, six. Like, I was like, it probably wasn't worth going to see in the theater, but I don't know. Without seeing the original. I say, watch the original. But if somehow that movie was wiped from existence... This one would be okay, I guess. It'd be just um, it'd be like, eh, well, this is a mediocre movie. Cool. If you feel if you don't feel like reading subtitles, then watch the Spike Lee version. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel if you're not willing to read subtitles or can't read subtitles, again, you have probably more problems than <laughs> that's, that's, that would be. So. That's true, though. The the Spike Lee film cost thirty million to make, and guess how much it opened? What? It cost thirty million dollars to make. How? I don't know. Now, dumplings. Get this. Get guess how much it opened with the opening weekend. One point two million. No. How much? Eight hundred and eighty-five thousand. Oh. Uh, and guess how much it made total? Three million. Lower. What? <laughs> One million. A l higher. Higher. 1.5 a little bit higher 1.8 it's 1.95 million oh that's yeah good. it it is i believe it is the biggest flop of 2013 of this year yeah. yep of but last year there was a lot of flops and i thought half of them were okay dread did not deserve to be a flop that movie's awesome yeah but i am really impressed that this movie flopped so bad because i wonder why because it got 15 it got 15 times less money than it was put in which is crazy but I wonder why. I guess the people who saw the original probably wouldn't go see the remake. And but and I think it was also advertising. I don't think the advertising was good at all for it. It was one trailer and that was it. And I saw that trailer in maybe one movie. I guess that's true. Yeah, I don't know. I I thought I don't think it deserved. I don't know. I I'm very conflicted about the movie because I saw it the first time and I was I was like this is pretty okay. Like it's not abysmal, but I didn't see the original. So if I, I'm sure if I saw the original first and then saw this one, I would have been like, this is garbage comparatively. Right. So, but the fact that the ending got me so well and was so effective, I, you know, I, I'd give it a five or a six. So what you're saying is that for people that have never seen the Korean and are never going to see it, why not watch this one? Right. It's still an okay movie and the storyline's intriguing. That being said, it's highly explicit. So if the reason the reasoning why you're not watching the original is because it's too explicit, this one's even more explicit. But it's definitely been Hollywoodized, is what you're is what you're saying. Most American remakes, yes, yes. But that's sometimes not a bad thing, and I think in this case that's not a bad thing because the old the Korean old boy was also kind of Hollywoodized. And the, I mean, that was a pretty big budget movie, right? Like it wasn't an indie. The budget for the original one was how much? Three million dollars. Yeah. So the remake cost 10 times as much money as the original one and made as much money as the original one cost to make. That's hilarious. <laughs> Actually, it didn't even make that. It made 2 million. That it it made it was off by a million on how much the original one cost to make. I don't know why the new one cost that much to make. How do you think they might have blown that money? I mean, it's 30 million dollars. That's a lot. Buying a lot of whiskey for the main character <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. Maybe just a bunch of reshoots, probably. Just getting it right. The actors, probably, also. That's true. Brolin probably was not cheap. I think Samuel but Jackson probably wasn't cheap. Samuel L. Jackson wasn't cheap. Then again, Samuel L. Jackson was in everything. That's, that is true. All right, so with that, <laughs> <laughs> with that, I think we are pretty much done. So thank you all for coming to this discussion, this 0.5 episode of Postgrad Movies, where we talked about Old Boy and Old Boy. 
<laughs> the old boys. Are they going to make a sequel called Older Boy? That's awful. That sounds awful. Don't give Spike Lee ideas. Oh, he would. He... He's going to take his $2 million and make a, a remake. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that $2 million is going straight to... God, I don't even know. Where, where would that movie money go? I mean, what happens to a, to a movie that flops? I don't know. Sp- I think Spike Lee's just going to take that and run away and change his name. To re-spike. My money. <laughs> Re- re-spike. <laughs> That's awful. That's awful. But anyway, yeah. You can follow me, Cool Guy, on Twitter at the right pad And Mr. Cog Games, you can follow him on Twitter as well, at Cognitive Gamer. I'm the Cognitive Gamer, and you can follow me at Cognitive Gamer. You can also find me... On site websites, site webs, site webs, on site webs site web. like IGN, right? Like Lee Spike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, IGN dot com. Type in cognitive. Ga- I'm blog and <laughs> I um. We we lost the English. We lost the English. <laughs> have you have you tried uh, turning off your brain and turning it back on? No, it's uh, I was doing that on purpose. <laughs> uh, you can find me on stuff. <laughs> And you can also find find him on electricfeast.com, which he didn't mention. Yeah, well, I haven't published anything in like three weeks, so you can still find him on there because he's got stuff. I've been so I've been so I've been so busy with finals. So I'm I'm really looking forward to, to Christmas break to get a lot of stuff done. Right. Yeah. And if you want to suggest future movies for the Netflix movie spotlight, totally not sponsored <laughs> by Netflix yet. Are you holding your breath? You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and then comment in the comment section. Or you can just email us at postgradentertainment at gmail.com. Exactly. And our YouTube channel, you can just type in postgrad entertainment or postgrad games into the search bar. And all of our videos will pop right up. All of the old podcasts are also on YouTube with the added functionality of being able to jump to the specific sections that you want to in the description. So if you want to hear specific talks about a movie you can you can jump through the entire podcast so with that thank you all and we hope to see you when we talk about the hobbit this weekend the desolation of smog